what we've defined is the ether that that they had um, did their very best to make go away. Because the Michelson Moore, they the same people reconducted that experiment um, mm -hmm. twenty years later, and they were able to detect the ether, but that information wasn't published you know, or widespread, didn't become widespread. Why? Because they had taken the walk down quantum electrodynamics and they didn't want to re re reverse their thing, which was that quintessence, that fluid, that Newton wrote all of his equations based off of his understanding, the same way that air has to propagate sound. Mm -hmm. um, th he recognized that there has to be a medium to propagate light and electromagnetism. Mm -hmm. And that medium the ether and everyone Maxwell built all of his equations off of it but they weren't able to prove it so the wave conjugations they actually tell you they actually define what happens where four forces meet what happens where eight meet what happens where six meet what happens where 12 or what happens where 24 all these natural folds mm -hmm. that occur within the etheric world that yeah. we become the of. We're living the effects of these things and the way and the all shapes, the mirrored all shapes, the ones that expand out, they represent the dark energy mm. okay. that everything else is moving its way through. So they are OK with understanding only four percent of the universe and 96 percent of it being being dark and, and mysterious, whereas we don't have that problem. The breakaway civilization that we're starting it understands and linchpin you know it's a great tangential flight vehicle yeah. but it's so much more than that that was low-hanging fruit for yeah. that application yeah. and even for the other patents mm -hmm. you know i don't think that there's any government on this planet that has any of the technology and the capabilities that we have mm. you know and i'm glad that they don't yeah i'm very yeah. glad that they that's yeah, amazing no. because Sylvester James Gates Jr., he's the former uh, scientific advisor to Obama when he was in office. Uh, he's a professor at the University of Maryland. He discovered these Adinkra codes. So he was looking at Adinkra symbols from the Dogon tribe, which is out of mm -hmm. Mali, Africa. And he said he presupposed, what if these were three-dimensional objects? And so as he turned these things into three-dimensional objects, he began to recognize mathematical equations in some of the formulas he had been looking into in supersymmetry. Uh, and these mathematical equations, according to him and these math mathematicians that he put together on this super team, they discovered that these, uh, these equations were error correcting codes hitting within the Adinkra codes. And the error correcting codes were the same exact error correcting codes as search engines and web browsers. And that's what's running the ether of space time itself. So in some way, shape or form, there, you know, the method of creation, which is why I wrote the book Fractal Holographic Universe, within that method of this creation, it seems to be a code running that's driving everything. Um, have you been able to see that or have you been able to experiment or through these wave conjugations or the flower of life, have you been able to detect anything uh, to that effect? Well, one of the things that that Eric brought up with the linchpin. He was like, this isn't, there's an error in here. There's a mistake in here. And that was the 109.47 angle instead of the 108 degree angle. But what he didn't realize is that's the area that the universe breathes through. There's always a hole there. There's an area that, that there's no matter or mass that's allowed to congregate or to collect in these spaces. And these are natural vents. These are the same vents that the, that the Birkeland currents run from, you know, and that's that, that plasma that runs through our universe. These areas are necessary. The, it's the breakdown of symmetry. Mm. that allows there to have the super, the grand symmetry. You have to have some kind of break in it, and that's what the linchpin does. That's why I say it's the constitution between the micro, the, the, the electric micro or the plasmic electric micro and the magnetic radiative um, expansive thing. This is the com communication board between it. It's an error correcting code. Mm -hmm. So it, it ties directly in with what you just said. Yeah, and, and that's it. But it's not a mistake; it's a necessity. Right. There has to be 
break down and there has to be a rebuild. You got to blow everything out in order to get the next breath in there. And there's a moment in which there's no breathing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is about light, how a photon doesn't go from point A to point B, that it propagates from pixel to pixel. Um, and are you are you seeing something similar with this, with the way the universe works from your perspective? Well, there's light doesn't travel. That's what I'm noticing, that it doesn't travel. Right. It's the, the energy is being reproduced. Yes. It's reproducing itself. There's a sexual mating that's taking place with each waveform. There's mm -hmm. a whole nother generation. Life is light is behaving that way. And we don't even see light. Light, we've never seen light. We just see the effects of it reflected right. on things, but we've never been able to see the light. You know, it's it's such a it's a much darker or denser um, state, you know, but that I've had the privilege of actually being able to patent, mm -hmm. you know, and put aside. And I'm like, OK, well, I can't share this with everybody because with it, you'll end up being able to really create some harm. You know, but it's that final state of matter. But light, they used to say that light behaved, um, what you could picture it the same way you picture um, a motion picture. You know, each film, each moment is, is captured. And then when shown on a screen or in a stream, it looks like one action, but it's actually a number of little bitty actions. No, the prospect of what we call light, that what we call light is actually the shadow mm. of of an energy of a greater energy we're seeing the shadow of it right. in this thing that we're the condensation of what's taking place in the dark matter and dark energy our entire existence our entire universe is just a condensation it's just a balancing between two different pressure conditions mm. you know so our illusion of what we see and call light you know, is nowhere near the nature of it because since so many creatures in the universe mm -hmm. feed off of light, mm -hmm. then you have to understand since you can't, living things cannot eat dead things. Mm -hmm. A person can't eat a concrete brick and get the nutrients from it. He can right. only eat living things. So mm -hmm. since so many creatures feed from light itself directly, wouldn't light have to be alive? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Look at us. Here we are contained in this flesh and we identify with this flesh, you know, where this is it's like we have a Range Rover. It's like if I identified with the Range Rover as being me, mm -hmm. you know, but we're living and existing inside of this this strange world. Mm -hmm. When you see a car driving down the street or an old truck flatbed and there's a chain hanging from it. The, the, the motion is going in this direction, mm -hmm. but the sparks be going in the opposite direction. From yeah. it's, it's, the sparks aren't flying in the same direction that the thing is in. The sparks are flying in the complete opposite direction. That's how I believe that light behaves. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. what we're seeing, the energy that we're seeing, we're seeing the energy is gone over here. We're seeing its shadow. We're seeing the leftover of it. Right. You know, we're participating in that leftover part of it because that light and, and that's the that's the that's the true nature of the creator that's right. the true nature of who we are and that's why we identify with it and one day we'll be be done with these bodies you yeah. know and we'll be able to see ourselves and like oh wow i'm i'm not just you know i, I don't i don't only just see 0. 0.005 percent of one half of one percent of the total spectrum i can now experience the entire thing mm -hmm. and then we'll wonder what we'll want to be flesh again because there's right. something interesting about things that you can do with the flesh mm -hmm. you know i like being married yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i like being i like being able to touch my wife you yeah. know but i would love to get i would love to become a spiritual being again yeah. i would love to get back there but let me finish the work i got to do here now mm -hmm. You know, maybe there's a bridge. I can't wait to see you and show you some of these incredible things. I would was hoping I would be able to do it tonight, but I thought I thought it was eight o'clock. Um, oh, man. That's OK. Thank you. So, you know, with, well, a lot of people think that when they see something, even the screen they're looking at us on right now, they think that they're seeing us in real time. But they're not seeing us in real time and you can't see anything in real time. Because the time it takes for the, the photon to ping 
off of the object and then hit the retina, go to the back of the brain and get deciphered, the thing has already moved, right? So what you're seeing is the past. We're always looking at the past. We know when we look up at the night sky, we're looking into the past. But when we look at anything, that even our hands, we're looking at our hands as they were, not as they are. And so, yes, you're right about that when, you know, the, the spark, the, the, the truck is going that way and the sparks are going that way. We're not seeing things as they actually are in the moment, even through quantum encryption. The reason why quantum encryption is so good is because at the quantum level, I mean, in order for you to find out, you know, whether an atom is spin rate up or spin rate down, you've got to ping a photon off of that atom. And once you do that, the spin rate changes. So that's why quantum encryption is so incredible. So we're not experiencing real, real time as we think we are. There is always seems to be a slight delay. Yeah. And if they understood the how the universe behaves, how things the the ratio by which things contract in comparison to the ratio by which things expand. If they were able to apply those things in there, they would have an opportunity to be present in the moment. But what it will ultimately do is it actually pulls you out. And that's what I was talking about, being able to decouple and get to that space where you're not affected by any of the forces. That's when you're able to fully utilize the universe as a whole and and the technology, you know, yeah, it's yeah. it's possible but you have to you you literally have to climb out of plato's cave you got to mm -hmm. stop looking at the shadows you got to stop believing all the banging on the drums and all mm -hmm. of these things you got to stop being afraid of the boogeyman mm -hmm. you know you got to face god and stop lying to yourself stop stop singing the hymns you know have a nice conversation with the true god and find the truth within yourself. And the stuff that you know is BS, you've got to be man enough to say this is some BS because it's there to help control you. Find the divinity in you, keep moving, keep challenging yourself. Like I just finished doing this um, job in Puerto Rico. Um, it was a great, it was a great opportunity to be there, but I'm there and I'm realizing these people, this is the Caribbean Palestine. Mm. They have no, they have not, they have never been allowed to vote. Mm. They have no vote in Puerto Rico. Yeah. They cannot ship anything into Puerto Rico. They can't, even though Dominica is right next to it or Haiti is right next to it or mm -hmm. St. Mark, they can't, they cannot trade. They, everything, if they had a boat that was coming to, to um, Puerto Rico, it has to stop in Miami, unload everything in Miami and then load it back onto the boat and then send it to Puerto Rico. It's called the Jones Act. It's been in, in, in place for 60 years. It, yeah. it takes away self-determination. It takes away any ability to grow. And these are people that were slaves. Mm -hmm. They're all descendants from slaves, and they're still sitting here in an apartheid state mm -hmm. without half of their municipal buildings have not been restored since the... Since, um, um, that that the hurricane, yeah. Like whatever happened to me to get me to this place, I'm so happy for it. I'm happy for all of the trials and tribulations. I'm I'm happy for being kicked out of the world. I'm happy for the misunderstandings because it made me dig deeper into my instincts, my ancestral past, the place that I know is true, not the hopes that I want to go to, but where I've come from. And if everyone can tap into that place, that what you said about those advanced civilizations, um, they were spiritual and, and technologically advanced. We call that art. Mm. All those things are expressions of art, of artistry. And the moment that you start playing with that, putting it into play, like, um, uh, like this last project that's what I'm talking about over in Puerto Rico, one of the things that I ended up doing is um, I, for this one, I was like, I'm going to write with my left hand for this one. I'm just going to allow you know, write all my Spanish stuff with my left hand and put that into play. You know, and there's other projects where I write with my left hand or my right hand and I'll do it backwards. But each one of those challenges 
what it's doing is it's strengthening my brain. What I found when I switched from right hand to left hand, my brain reversed the chemistry, I had a different kind of line of thought. But then when I switch from writing forwards to backwards in either hand, it mm -hmm. ends polarizing it. So now there's four individuals that's sitting there watching with an expectation of how something should be written, how it should be played out. And there's and you realize that these are different personalities within you, but actually different DNA series or different people from, you know, my 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 mother, my father, my grandmother, my grandfather, whoever they are. But you give them a voice because one of them may have been left-handed. One of them may have been like when you mentioned Molly or the Dogon people. My 21% of me is is um, Molly, and mm -hmm. another 20% is um, Benin Toga. Mm -hmm. You know, we're actually my people are from Timbuktu, <laughs> wow. actually. So it's that 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 rich history we can all draw into it. But everyone has to find the God inside. Or they'll never, they'll, it's like what they said about Paris. You, you know, unless you take Paris with you, you'll never see it. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, know, you have some expectation of it and you have to see it in yourself. And that's why I'm so proud of what you've done. And, you know, you've stood by me throughout this entire process and it's been rough. And I, I really appreciate your, your forbearance and your patience with me, Billy. You no know, problem. it really meant a lot. And um, I hope that we can, continue to grow together. Um, Jeff Mim, Dr. Jeff Mimsies was the one that was responsible for me actually getting out here and talking to the scientific community because I had already said that there was nothing coming from it, that it wasn't going anywhere. And he's, he's a professor that um, I met in um, somewhere in Mideast. Mm -hmm. But he really encouraged me to get this stuff out there. And for all the hits that it takes, great. You know, but there's there's truth. There's a, there's all truth. And if it's if there's any lie, you know, don't don't throw it away. Yeah. You know, but um, what I don't appreciate, though, is, um, you know, when you have the truth in front of you and when you push it aside, mm -hmm. you're not actually pushing that person that's delivering it aside. You know, it wasn't me that they were rejecting. They were rejecting the person that they gave this knowledge to me. It was for their benefit, their edification. Mm -hmm. So you reject it if you want, but the people that care about their future, mm -hmm. you know, look up yeah. the book, look at the wave conjugations, learn how to make them yourself, and you won't need any teacher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolute facts. And I've seen some of your inventions actually working on some of our private talks, and it's amazing. It's, it's, mind-blowing stuff so we'll come back on we'll set up we'll hit you up we'll set up on a another mm -hmm. uh, another live and we'll bring the wave conjugations to the people so they can wrap their minds around some more incredible knowledge and so thank you again for coming on man i know you you you, you know you persevered you got you're getting eaten up by bugs out there it's <laughs> hot and everything else man are you walking around the yard i appreciate you man you're you're a real hero man yeah that's you and i appreciate you like i said for sticking with me yeah yeah no i that means everything. Thank your wife for the time. You know, this means a lot. And uh, I look forward, like like I said, next week, I'm good. Let's, yeah. let's do this again and actually walk them through the stuff and walk through the patents. That's yeah. what it's necessary. So they can, because there's things that they can use. And what you mentioned earlier about potentially open sourcing these things, some of these things, I would really love to talk about, you okay. know, how that can benefit. I just don't want it to be misused. Yeah, gotcha. This guy, we just got to brainstorm. Once we brainstorm, all kind of incredible ideas will come to us from the universe, man, and we can put something together that that protects us, but also helps the world. You know. Happy birthday next week on the fourth, man. Hey, thank you, brother. Appreciate it, man. Four <laughs> bit of knowledge on the fourth. <laughs> <laughs>